Just giving people some time to get in here this morning. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. This is Gerald and Millicent. And we just want to say good morning. First and foremost, we want to make sure we remind everybody to make sure that your um, pipes are wrapped. It's going to be extremely cold, uh, but the wind is blowing uh, very hard. So, Whatever degree they say it's going to be, it's probably going to be five to ten degrees almost colder. So any kind of outside pipes that you need to wrap, please make sure you wrap them today. I don't know what is left at the store because I want to pick up my stuff on Wednesday, but just make sure that you wrap up your stuff um, so that you don't have any pipes to bust but that will cause you any more uh, heartache and pain than any plants. Uh, that you think you need to wrap, you know, at least cover up to make sure that they don't uh, die from, from the frigid cold. So today, excuse me, we want to continue with uh, the lessons that we've been talking about for the last three, three weeks. Um, making sure that we have, um, what it is, what's this, what, what it is, what it is. Covenant accountability. Covenant accountability. I said what it is. <laughs> what it is, what it is. So, my covenant accountability. So, we have two uh, outstanding prayers that we're going to read. Uh, we'll first make our declarations to each other. Uh, oh, before we do that, yesterday was date night. And so, you know, we wouldn't hung out like we always do. We Our date night is every third Friday of the month so i encourage you you know date night you know you need to do that with your husband you need to do that with your wife you need to take your wife on a date get away and do not talk about work okay do not <laughs> talk about work that's not why we were there and if you are single doesn't matter take yourself on a date treat yourself to an extravagant meal or just go to the place that you like to go, your favorite place. We've been trying to go to some places different that we haven't been to. So, day night is cool for us. We um, 
we we look forward to it and we don't compromise. Even though we had some other things to pop up yesterday, we still was able to have our date night. Right. Mm -hmm. Our kids even look forward to it. They keep up with it almost better than we do, huh? Mm -hmm. That might be because they be trying to do something on the go. But uh, they want us, they, 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 they know that we do it, so yeah. it's a good thing for us. So, also, before we get started, I want to wish Miss Delma and Mr. Tori Trevino happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We love y'all. Yes, y'all are do. amazing. And I'll be seeing you soon, Tori. I'm coming up here. So, let's just have a, let's have a great time. Let's be able to <laughs> discuss some things. I make my declaration of you like I always do. And I just, you know, I just thank God for what we are now, no matter what we've had to face. You know, we've been we've been pushing this we've been pushing this work and you know, the things that we have to really be committed to. Committed to our relationship with God. I make sure that my declaration that I keep that relationship with God first and foremost, and then also with you being able to love you, being able to spend time with you, being able to share uh, my dreams, my, my goals, my aspirations with you. And then, you know, working to be able to be the best father I can be uh, to the kids. So I, that's that's like a lifelong declaration. But I mean, it's something that as a man and as a husband, as a son to God, I mean, I need to be able to do that. So I'm always be committed to doing that each and every day the best that I can. Mm -hmm. You want to make me cry this early in the morning? You should be crying. The happy tears. <clears throat> My declaration to you is that as long as you follow God, I will follow you to the end of the earth. I will continue to love you and support you and be your biggest cheer. I back you in everything that you do. And I'm so excited that where we are now and then look back 24 years where we started. And this thing is just grown and it's amazing. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, 24 years, five jobs, broke with no money. That's what I had, five jobs, five jobs. Still what God, because you was in it all. And so this morning, we're going to, um, there are two prayers that I, well, I don't know. Did you want to read this one and then I'll read the other one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if that's the case, I need to get this from you so that I can find the scriptures. Here. Okay, first okay. Corinthians. So two scriptures that we'll cover today as far as the prayer for the wife. And it will be 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, and then it will also be Ephesians 4 and 32. So I'm going to make a valiant attempt to get on a phone that I don't work and be able to find what I need to find. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Coffee. So his prayer, um, the prayer for his wife. It says, Lord, I lay all my expectations at your cross. I release my husband from the burden of fulfilling me in areas where I should be looking to you. Help me to accept him the way he is and not try to change him. I realize that in some ways he may never change. But at the same time, I release him to change in ways I never thought he could. I leave any changing that needs to be done in your hands. Fully accepting that neither of us is perfect and never will be. Only you, Lord, are perfect. And I look to you to perfect us. May we, perfect, may we be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment, which is 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. So good morning, Ms. Kate Jolivet. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Ms. Lena McDonald. Ms. Charlie. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Lydia. A happy belated birthday again. Okay. All right. And so I want to read First um, Corinthians one and ten. And so it's very it's very clear, and it has some words in here. I want to make sure to highlight. It says, "I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united." in mind and thought so that you agree 
with one another. That's one of the biggest things that I think that <clears throat> has been able to be a part of our success is, you know, we find a way to agree, you know, and it's not always <clears throat> what I want or what my wife wants, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're doing what's best. And when we say agree, that means you have to be able to go and go before God in prayer, whether it's individual as a man, individual as a woman, or collectively together. Whichever way you do it, you need to be able to go before God. If there's some confusion, then you ask, you ask God to take away any confusion because confusion doesn't come from God, it comes from the devil. Because anything from God is going to be very clear for you to do. Even though you may not see the end game, at least your next step is going to be very clear. The devil wants you to be confused so you don't know which step to take, which direction to look in, and who to talk to. That's not God. God don't function like that. And that and goes so, back to praying over the atmosphere <clears throat> of your home. And that's not something that you just do when there's difficult conversation. That needs to be done on a regular basis. And there's nothing that you have to toil over. You can just simply talk to God <laughs> like I'm talking to you. Lord, I ask you to make the atmosphere of my home peaceful. I take authority over anything that does not line up with you. And I ask you to bring about a peaceable spirit. I take authority over um, arguments or, you know, fussing and, you know, dissension or whatever it is. But you can just talk to God about it. And so, uh, the other part of the scripture says that uh, it says not only that you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. That there be no divisions among you. So you can't allow for anything to come between you. You can't allow for uh, outside influences, <laughs> children, trying to pick you one against the other, family members that have no business in your business because you shouldn't be sharing your business with them. Especially if they need you no know, good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some <laughs> things you gotta, you gotta have the foot on your own. Don't say, I'm not saying that you don't talk to your family, <clears throat> but if you don't talk to your family about your marriage before you don't talk to God, then therein lies the confusion. Therein lies all the voices and there comes the thing where you have to figure out what you need to do and it feels so hard because you don't know where to turn. But when you give out all that information, it's gonna be hard to turn anywhere because everybody got their, their, their you know, their I guess their words to say or their comments or their life experiences and I'm not saying that they don't know anything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you need to go to God first. So um, we're gonna delve back into the prayer. So that we can be very clear about some of the other verbs that were uh, spoken in there. So, so Ephesians 4 and 32 says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And that's not always easy to do. But we have to remember what the, what the end goal is. Mm -hmm. And who we join to. So that should change your focus. I think that um, I've never said this, but just listening to you, you know, I think there's a pathway to forgiveness. And I think you have to really um, decide that that's what you want to do. And you have to be clear with your spouse that uh, I'm working on forgiving you. It is going to take me some time. And if I bring something back up that is not what I want to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to either lower how many times I bring that back up or however you need to do that in order to show them that that's not going to constantly be something that you keep putting back in somebody's face. Mm -hmm. But you need to let them know that where you are right now, this is a pathway to forgiveness because I've said it, and I'm working on my mind aspect of it that I want to forgive, but I'm going to let you know that it will take me some time. Right. 
but I love God enough and I love myself enough to commit to the process of forgiveness. So that that way the person understands that, you know, you working on that. And then that, when I read the, the prayer for the man, then you'll understand why I was saying that. I've never said that before. You know, yeah, you know, in, in some of our instances, you, you ask somebody to forgive you, you know, you want to do it now. But quite naturally, if they're constantly um, bringing that back up, then they haven't let go and it's eating at them. But in order for us to be united, because we were talking about being united with no divisions among us in First Corinthians 1 and 10, mm-hmm. and that's what we must do. It says, in the name of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. So you're going to have to remove some obstacles, or you have to remove some thoughts that could be barriers themselves so that you can begin that process of forgiveness so that that way as you continue to focus on your marriage and your relationship those things won't be something that stop you from moving um good morning miss williams i keep you good morning miss williams i hope i didn't miss up your name good morning miss damn stewart jackson hola and hi good morning miss doris and so uh those are the things that are very very important because we're trying to build the relationship where when you know that you have made a breakthrough it brings about some good seasoning to your relationship i mean when you have one of them big time breakthroughs you get some seasoning in that relationship it's like a it's like a meal that you can smell uh, before you get in the house. You can kind of smell it through the cracks of the door before you come in. That's when you know you had one of those breakthroughs. And and when any time after that, something like that comes up, it's covered up under the blood of Jesus and it does not have any place. It does not have any dominion in your life, in your relationship, in your home, at your workplace, in your car, God, or wherever your feet touch the ground, it has no dominion because now it has been placed at the cross and then it's been placed under your feet so and you know what even in the the forgiveness process you know that's still working on communication mm -hmm. because if you can if you can tell somebody you know i'm i'm working on that yes because i'm i'm truly hurt so i'm trying to you know pray and and ask god to help me with this Uh still you cannot be malicious and ugly to the other person because you just canceled them out what you're trying to do yes you know so we have to keep that in mind because again ephesians 4 and 32 says be kind to one another in tender order forgiving one another forgiveness is not easy we human but be mind you still have to be mindful of that other person and the other thing like i always say about flipping the script put yourself in that person's shoes mm-hmm. you know how would you want to be treated, even if you know you hurt that person? How would you still want them to treat you during the forgiveness process? Now, I want to read something because I want to be very clear because I still have to do the male part of the prayer. But it says, help me to accept him the way he is and not try to change him. I realize that in some ways he may never change, but at the same time, I release him to change in ways I never thought he could. Uh, that's a bold prayer because that's truly saying that you accept somebody. And I'm not saying you're supposed to put up with you know all kinds of different things. What I'm saying is when you have, it shouldn't get to the point where you have exhausted all of what you have and you did everything you're supposed to do. And then you look up to Christ and say, hey, hey, I need some help, come help me. It should be the opposite. You should be, Praying over him when he's not in the house, praying over the room, praying over the atmosphere, like Nelson said, you know, praying over his vehicle, wherever you can insert a prayer of peace for your husband, you know, do that. So that, that way he realizes, even if he does want to, you know, act contrary to what the word of God says he should be doing, he will be convicted in the spirit. And then he'll either walk away and go be quiet somewhere else and fuss. 
or, or he may be going to go think about his actions, but you may see that difference in your in your husband based on the prayer of covering and grace uh, that you prayed over the, the atmosphere and also over your husband uh, in, that, in that regard. So I want to interject something here. Mm -hmm. So ladies, that means stop trying to fix it yourself. Go to the one that created the marriage in the first place. And y'all didn't create the marriage, God created the marriage. Mm -hmm. So you go to God with the concerns. And you pray asking for discernment as a wife. You know, Lord, how do I talk to him where he can receive my words? Not as an attack, yes. but receive my words out of love and that I'm on his side so he understands that I'm not the enemy. Right? You can't fix it. The only person that can fix it is God. So this is the, the why we're so dead set on praying over the atmosphere. I can't stress that that is so, so important. And also the atmosphere actually covers you too, so that you, even in a, in a fit of rage or whatever, mm -hmm. however you may be feeling that mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. <laughs> say something that, you know, you'll regret. Right. And then now it becomes a serious issue uh, that it, it will be hard to fix because you said something very, very hurtful. Right. And now we are in that place. So, so then there's something else you got to fix. Try to fix. Excuse me. Is this right? Page 12. We're trying to make sure because it changes. Mm -hmm. All right. So all of them stalking. Okay. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read the prayer for the husband. So all you men, pay attention. And if you're not, if there's no men watching, then wives, this is some extra ammunition for you so that you can be able to, uh, help with your husband <clears throat> so it says lord i pray that you would bring my wife and me to a new place of unity with one another make us to be of the same mind show me what i need to do in order to make that come about so let me just stop there it says show me men it says show me what I need to do in order to make that come about. So that what that what that could be, because I'm not God, that could be that God may hearing the prayer that your wife has and understanding that you yourself desire to be better, then that's a part of bringing you into unity because then even though you are where you are in your marriage, both people are going before God. He can do a lot more with that and people doing other things. So it says, give me words that heal and not wound. Fill mm -hmm. my heart with your love so that whatever overflows through my speech yes. will be words that build up, yeah. not tear down. Convict my heart when I don't live your way. Help me to be the man, husband, and spiritual leader that you want me to be. See, I've, I've come to the place that, and I and I said this to my wife, I said, well, these prayers for the men are not that long. I said, but for the wife, they're long. I said, what's the issue with that? But see, the words in here of the commandments of what the prayer is praying over the men are very profound. One, it's still talking about unity as in the prayer for the wife. Two, it said, make us be of the same mind so that means that we need to be able to pray together in some regard well he don't want to pray just have him sit right there with you and listen to you either way you don't pray because if you practice doing it together and even though one may not say nothing you're in the same space so there's a better chance that you'll be able to do it as opposed to i'm gonna go pray over here you go pray over there Ooh, no, come on now. you know so you want to do that. That's when you do that in your car. Or you do, you know, do this stuff when, you, when you both of y'all are at home at the same time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you pray together at some point in time. It says to give me words that heal and not wound. So just because there may be something that may be said to you, you don't have to turn around and say something back that, that's, that's 
gonna hurt somebody because when people are hurting that's what they do they speak out of their pain right now they're not thinking about other stuff they're speaking out of their pain and if you already as a man understand that the person is speaking out of their pain but there could be some truth to what she's saying about how you are behaving or a lack of whatever you're supposed to be doing then don't take it as a personal attack take it as a take it as a place of this person loves you enough to tell you how they feel uh but again we have to package the gift yeah. so that people can receive it you know and if you don't know how to do that mm -hmm. that's where again saying on yourself that how your words come out mm -hmm. or please not pleasing to the ear that's not what i want to say but are more receptive yeah that's it that's, yeah. that's a good okay. word and so we've done that before and we've said things to each other that we shouldn't have said and that is not how <clears throat> you build a relationship yeah. that's going to last the test of time because when it all comes down to it you know uh nobody really knows me like she does uh and nobody knows her like i do they may know some aspects of her but i know for my wife and so when he says convict my heart when i don't live your way that's something that you as a man can be praying for yourself because if you know you're not lining up with the word of god and you're not doing what you need to be doing you know then be transparent with god about that so that he can help you to get where you need to be and that you you know i ain't say anything about the wife at this time i'm talking about the man but you, if you find that they <clears throat> can't be transparent <clears throat> if they can be transparent with god <clears throat> even though he knows anyway yes but if you can't be transparent with God, that's the same. That's what we talked about a couple of weeks ago as being humble. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be humble. You have to be open because how can you not be open with the person that made you? With the, you know, the one that created you. That's the, the one that knows everything about you. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you can't be open and honest with him, mm -hmm. even in your long time, that's a problem. And so this is what I would say to anybody, male or female, you know. It's never too late to have a relationship with God. You know, you go in, you ask God to forgive you of all your sins, and you confess your sins before Him, and you ask God to come into your heart and He's your Lord and Savior. You can do that any time. You know, God knows when you sincere about it. He knows when you want to uh, have a, a, a change, and not only does He know it, Jesus knows it, the Holy Spirit knows it, all the angels in heaven know it. They up in the, they cheering you on, <clears throat> praying that you, you know, just open up another part of your heart, right. you know, because I think that a big a big deal about living for God is, you know, at what point in our lives, and I'm saying this because it's deep, at what point in our lives will we give Him all of our heart, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, there's a release when you. You, every time you give him a part of it, there's more for him to occupy. But when when do we give him all of it? I mean, we're supposed to do it. Don't get me wrong. But I was saying that's something that that's a lifelong process. Heart closes when it gets hurt. Balls go up. Heart don't want to receive nothing when it's hurt. So now, you know, work on that. I'm gonna give you this piece. I'm gonna give you this piece. I want to give you all of it. But don't sit there and lie to God. So every time you Every time God shows you something that you can release, mm -hmm. release that, release that, release that, and then release that, and then whatever it is. And when you know that you're confident in saying, I give you all, then say all and know that you have all of it. Right. But if it's a peace here and a peace there, and a non-forgiveness here and a unforgiveness, give it to them piece by piece then. If you're not going to give all, but don't say you're going to give all and don't do it. So. That's my that's my you know my talk to both but also the men. You know it says in this prayer to fill my heart with your love so that it overflows through my speech. That's how she's gonna know when you change. Right. Because the words that you're gonna say are gonna build up and not tear down, but it's gonna be an overflow of it, meaning that she has been praying for your butt all this time, and now here it comes. Boom. A overflow of all the things that she wanted didn't get and now that what she had is it miss k is there still no sound 
Y'all let us know if you can hear us or see us. We don't have a sound? Ooh. She said, I lost you guys. No sound. Okay. Uh-oh. So can somebody? Oh, okay, there no. you go. All right, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I wish I knew how to do that. I promise y'all even know how to lost hearts on the internet. This is a bad <laughs> So, good morning, Miss Omega. Good morning. How are you? We love you. We love you. We love you. And so, uh, I love these prayers. that I really do. Because when you don't know what to say, and somebody has reached out to God with their heart and put it down on paper, there's nothing wrong with reading it mm-hmm. so that you can create your own love story between you and God. But I think for, for men, you know, no matter who they are, it's just always a part of, you know, releasing or, uh, let me see how to say it. Uh, relinquishing territory. You know, the Bible says that you want to have dominion over things, but as a man, you got to release territory of your heart so that you can be able to occupy that space and then they'll see change. And so, looking at this prayer, it says, Convict my heart when I don't live your way. So, as a man, I don't care what kind of man you are good man, bad man, despicable man. You know, whatever man it is, God is going to show you and he's going to identify uh, something to your eyes and to your ears to let you know when you've done something wrong. You are going to identify with it and know that you did something wrong. And at that point, you need to fix it. But if not, you know, therein lies the problem. You know, when you get to a point where your heart is cold or it's impenetrable, then you don't have a hard time being able to uh, have the marriage you want when you don't allow God to come in and do some uh, reconstruction. Right. You know, so my thing is, we know uh, when God is convicting us to say, hey, man, you shouldn't get that. Don't you say that for You know, you need to go ahead and fix that. And don't wait till tomorrow. Go fix it now. And so, good morning, Miss Hart. And so, you know, you need to, um, you need to go and ask God to fix that and be serious about it. Don't be playing around because he understands. But this is the last part of that prayer because it, it, it goes to this point. Help me to be the man, the husband, and spiritual leader that you want me to be. So, Not that the wife wants him to be. That God wants him to be. Ooh, that's important. That's a big one. I want him to pray like this. He needs to be able to say it like this. Not your call. He needs to go that way. Not your call. God is talking to him. And if he's doing it in a way that's successful mm-hmm. and it's and it's and it's not against the word, well then why is it such a problem? Right. Because uh we used to have this thing and and, and and I can laugh about it now because I don't know why I used to be such a problem. But I used to look at her and say, I don't think like you. <laughs> and she would take that like, you know, because she, she, she had a way of doing something. I was a thinking. Yes, she was. I was just, you know, but I was like, I don't think like that. You know, but I mean systematically. I, I think one done. time I told him, you, well, you need to try it. <laughs> and so you my thing was, I was like, wow. And so, you know, so I think what helped, what helped <laughs> us was, uh, good morning, Miss Thompson. Yeah, so what helped us was we went on it. You know what? I started like thinking out loud, showing her, you know, why I was doing what I was doing. And her thing was the shortcut and do it this way. And I'm like, I'm not even with you when I'm out there, almost, you know, doing whatever I'm doing. So <laughs> I'm sure I'm not going to be doing that because in my mind, if I'm out there, and it's something that I'm going to be doing. Right. I'm going to do it the best way that I know. As long as it's successful <laughs> and I don't go past whatever deadline it is, then let me be. So I think we have really overcome that because we used to be. I had to relinquish that territory. Oh, goodness. You know, <laughs> that was something that we just had to work on. And it was funny because I'm like, why are, we, why are we fussing about this stuff? And so what you find out is, 
you know, the commitment that you have to each other and, you know, just just being able to know, again, when you when you had a breakthrough, when you had a breakthrough, then that stuff don't bother you yeah. anymore. And it doesn't come up as some repetitive thing to argue about. It just it just goes away. It but if it does come back up, if you pay attention and get the lesson out of the last time yeah. and let God direct you, yes. then you, when it does come up again, you've grown and you know how to handle it in a different way. Mm -hmm. To the point that, okay, I'm going to deal with this. It's done, mm -hmm. but it doesn't escalate it to what it did before. Yes. So that's how you know you've grown and God's taken you to a different level in your marriage and it shows and it's just it's a joy. It's yes. amazing. So uh, the scripture that I'm going to read, because it was only one, it was from Ephesians 5, 31 through 33. It says, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Let each one of you in particular so love his wife as himself, and let the wife uh, see that she respects her husband. And so, uh, if you don't love yourself as a man, it's going to be very difficult for you to love somebody else. Well, I do love me. I take care of myself. I get a haircut. I take a bath. I do all these things. I make sure I'm punctual. Then why you don't treat your wife with respect? Because if you do all those things, then that shows that you love yourself and you take care of yourself. You should treat her uh, like she's a partner and not some kind of subordinate creature that you lord over. I don't know who came up with that that myth. Uh, you know, we work together. There are some decisions that I will have to make, and that's just the way it is as far as that. But when we agree to it, like we talked about in a couple of lessons, if we agree to it, mm -hmm. we take it. But if she's saying that she heard from God about something, I'm old enough to know, and we've been married long enough to know to know when that's true. And so I will believe it, I will back up. So that that way the blessing can fall on both of us instead of me putting us in in whatever way harm's way or just missing a blessing that we can have this year that may not come up again for another five or six years. I'm not gonna mess that up, and so I understand that. So I'm not gonna waste my time trying to have a power struggle over something like that. But when we both make a decision and it just tanks, we own it. We just dust ourselves off and keep on going. Ain't nothing to point no blame that because we made the partnership to go and do it. And that's it. But what it does is lets us it lets us know that we shouldn't be uh, impatient. Right. We should think things through. And then we should wait on a response from God. If we have not heard one, then we probably should make it. That is not the time to play the blame game. Yeah. We both talk about it, mm -hmm. make the decision together, mm -hmm. own it together. So we are getting ready to wrap this up for today but i just you know i want you all to understand that every time we do a live broadcast all it is that we want to do is to make sure that you are able to hear from somebody that is working on continuing a relationship with god working to continue a relationship with each other Working to continue and build a relationship with our children. It's hard raising kids. And you all know that they have some. And so if you haven't went through anything with your kids, I want to find out who that is. Because I'm telling you, you know, <laughs> how you but how you handle those things and how we've been able to work with them together teaches us that, you know, there's some things that you have to do differently as a father, as a mother. And so when we look at God's word, we put that first, and we're trying to make sure that we teach our children that, that they understand that. Because the biggest, I think one of the biggest joys is going to be that when they decide to take that lifelong journey with whoever it is that they, that they choose, mm -hmm. then they should be somebody that's going to give God <clears throat> first priority. Um, but at the same time, love them unconditionally. And then, you know, you got to separate uh, from family on some issues. 
so that you can, because it says, leave father and mother and cling to your, your wife, then you need to do that. Because, but, but I'm sorry. <clears throat> job. No, I'm just saying, because that's what's, you know, it's just going to be y'all. Because all I'm saying is it's going to be you, your husband, you and your, you know, your wife and yourself. So, I mean, you got to make, you know, you and your husband, you know, you know, you work through those things, but you're giving to God. So, I'm just very, <clears throat> I'm very confident that as we continue to, to talk to you guys and we continue to pray over relationships, that you will continue to grow in those things. We are not an authority on anything. We just tell you what we live and what we've done. Are we perfect? Nope. But we really try to be mindful and we have a space of communication where we can tell each other when we hurt each other. And if we do not notice that, or overlook that, or didn't think that it was hurtful, and one of us tell each other, then we listen. But so, that's a process. You you have to get to that. You have mm -hmm. to grow to that. So don't man, mm -hmm. please don't marry somebody thinking that they supposed to just automatically know that. It's a lifelong work. Mm -hmm. The learning doesn't stop. Yes. It doesn't stop. You know, we've been going to a marriage class at church since. So the year that we got engaged, which was what, in 93. Mm -hmm. So from that time, all the way up until now, we've been involved in some type of marriage class, mm -hmm. period. You know, because you never stop learning, it's always something. Yeah. So please don't think you know it all. Because we don't. I want to just say that. Okay. okay. She's going to answer the door. So, um, just be mindful of this. We are believing, you, we believe in the trust in God to bless your home, to bless your marriage, to bless your finances, to bless your relationships, to be able to, to just grow as a person. You know, <clears throat> I want everybody to know that when you are at the end of your race, because I can't run your race and you can't run mine. I can't run Melissa's race and she can't run mine. But at the end of your race, when your life is over and you are no longer here, I want the legacy of your life to live on in other people. The decisions that you made, the love that you gave, the respect, the patience, all of the fruits of the spirit, those are going to transfer <clears throat> because they're going to always say what you did and how you handled it in God's way. And that doesn't die. And so that's what ultimately the goal is. Your marriage, let it be a marriage that's a legacy. Let your relationship with God be a legacy so that if you are no longer on the earth, somebody can take what they saw you do as you live for God, as you work with your spouse, and they they use that in order to better themselves. So I want you to have a great week. Uh, again, wrap up your pipes, cover up whatever plants you need to cover up. Good morning, Miss Lula. <clears throat> we get ready to go, Miss Lula. But we thank you for joining. My wife went to answer the door. She's back. They need you to, to be able to open the window, pitch it, flip it, so they can pull the baseball stick window. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up, but uh, we thank y'all for joining us, as always. And just remember that, please practice. Yes. <laughs> you gotta practice. So you don't get good at nothing practicing. Yes, practice. exactly. Yeah. So when you had your first kiss, you didn't stop then. You practiced. <laughs> and you became a, then you became a great kisser. I don't really have nothing to do with it. I'm just saying. Hey, you practiced. <laughs> but also, yeah. just to tell you all real quick, uh, we started a YouTube channel. So if you're missing on Facebook. You can go and catch it on the YouTube, our YouTube channel. It's simply Gerald and Millicent Johnson Jr. Please like the video, share the video, because our thing is we want to so and invest in marriages growing and growing in the love of God. Okay? 
So we love you all, and we will join you next Saturday at 8 o'clock to discuss marriage matters because your marriage matters. We love you guys. Thank you. Have a great weekend.